Beautiful. Thank you. Kaspar Putnins, welcome uh, together with, uh, with your choir. You've been working with this choir for 25 yeah, years. That's correct, yeah. Alongside Crazy. your, your uh, colleague conductor, Sihwat Kiava, leading the choir. Now, it sounds really special to me, 25 years. Um, what makes it so special or rewarding to conduct this choir? Well, there are so many things, you know, it's been, basically it's been my life. Obviously, I was quite young when I started working with this group. Uh, ambitious, you know, full of energy. And this group has grown together. Mm. It feels to me that we have been developing this, this language, this understanding of, 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 of what music is for us. Yeah. And this, uh, these communication ways together. Yeah. And it certainly doesn't feel like 25 years, you know. It's, uh, Every day is a new day, and uh, every musical piece uh, is a new challenge. Yeah. Uh, every every program with its context and its shape is a new challenge, and all the time we have to also develop our yeah. sort of vocabulary yeah. and our communication yeah. channels. Is singing a very important part of your culture? What is special about us is is the. Uh, the way it is organized, we, we have these, these famous singing festivals, which ah, are massive. Okay. And there are special venues built in all Baltic capitals, where uh, up to 20,000 people come together in the choir. And then there wow. are... So it's, 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 it's more than a bigger rock event. It is much more in, okay. in, 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 in Latvia yeah. and also in Estonia, the same thing. Now, the choir, it's such a high level. How did you get the choir to such an ex exceptional level? First of all, most of these people uh, are basically have really grown up with singing. That, that certainly is true with these people, that they have huge A lot of experience. experience yes. yeah. Huge experience in, in singing, but also uh, in music in general. We have a wonderful organ player in, in the group. We have people who have education in instruments. We have a musicologist and, and so forth. Uh, but what is characteristic for them all that they've started singing when they are still children. Yeah. And that, makes, that means that they not only intellectually know more, much about music, but they also have that, that, you know, that physical sense to how, how it is to sing mm. and how it is to sing in ensemble. They have, that, they have very good, very well developed that, that balancing yeah, system yeah, within yeah. themselves. This is one thing and then, yes, I mean, we are happy and, and lucky that we can spend quite a lot of time together. We can, we can practice and we can uh, yeah, live our dream yes. and our ambition in music. One of the things that you're aiming is to, to push the boundaries vocally, right? You explore the vocal possibilities. We experiment quite a lot. Experiment, yes. and, and is that also why you call it a sound laboratory? Yes, that is correct, yeah. Well, unfortunately here now at this moment we can't really present much of it, but uh, that is rather... Uh, a substantial amount of time that we spend on, on, on experimenting sound and uh, we have had a couple of, of, of uh, bigger projects which last for more than like two or three years when we involve uh, uh, people who are specialized in, in, all, in, in, in say a Middle East music. Mm. And then we explore the scales, we explore a little bit of technique and we try to uh, uh, incorporate also the instruments from okay. that area. N not, not having another crossover project, but trying to really integrate. Yes. And uh, uh, we've had also projects when we specialize ourselves for a certain amount of time into, into specific technique like harmonic singing, overtone singing or microtonality. When you're experimenting the way you, you say you do, um, you feel that, that there are no limitations for the voice. Like, how flexible is the voice? If you have to say it in, like, two or three sentences, as an well, instrument. Well, the voice certainly has limits, but at the same time, the voice certainly is the richest instrument in the world. Yeah. There is no other instrument that could have such... May, well, maybe some uh, very advanced electronic mm -hmm. gadgets, but, but <laughs> talking about uh, acoustic sound, the voice is certainly the richest, richest possible instrument. You can make all kinds of noise, you can make all kinds of sounds, yeah. you can make uh, ugly sounds, yeah. and most beautiful sounds, and yeah. everything in between. Yeah. When you mentioned overtone singing, now I'm a singer myself, 
but I'm not sure what overtone singing <laughs> means. And um, maybe is, is it possible for you with the choir to give us a very short demonstration of what happens with the voice and the mouth when, when you have overtone singing? Yeah. Well, I must say that we can give you a little example. It, it sounds much more effective, of course, if it is in the piece itself, when yes. it has its musical reason, you know, just yes. to give a little uh, exercise. But probably for doesn't us, it's make nice that much. to right. see. <laughs> we, we can do that, of course. There are several techniques. We've spent time, uh, we've spent some time with Swiss uh, singer uh, Christian Sender, who is specialized in, in, in some uh, extended vocal techniques. And he, he has developed very good methodology uh, for, for that uh, singing, which is, uh, which is usable for Western singers, because some of, the, some of these uh, techniques are actually quite harsh for the yeah. voice. Yeah. Uh, like Mongolia. That's why I'm so and, curious. And <laughs> Give me that. Here we go. sure if I could do that. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Um, okay, uh, one last question. You work with a lot of uh, young composers, um, but also with more eminent names, uh, like Arvo Pert. Yeah, the last cool. piece you're gonna play is one of his compositions, yeah. right? Um, when I think of a, it's, it's a col collaboration uh, which you do with, with such a, a composer, what does it contain to work with him? Does he, does he meet the choir? Yeah, well, honestly, we haven't really commissioned from, from Arvo. Uh, nevertheless, the choir has worked with him. Uh, the composers are, uh, uh, yeah, very different types, you know. There are some who just deliver the score and that's it. And then there are, there are some who are very collaborative and who are, who are very good, actually, at explanation. Yes. Of, uh, and, and also, yeah, communication with the musicians. And, and Arvo Part is certainly one of those. Yeah, he's, a, so he's really an important name yeah, in, yeah, in, in the yeah. sacral and choral music yeah. from the Baltic states. Yeah, yeah. And when he communicates with the choir, the choir understands him immediately? He is the one who really can do that, yes. Ah. He's wonderful. He is, he is really wonderful. You, first of all, he's very nice as a person. Very warm, beautiful personality, and also he's he's able to very well express himself. Okay. He's able to very precisely somehow deliver the yeah. the message. Yeah. The name of the last piece is Nung Dimitis. Nung Dimitis. Nung Dimitis. We're gonna listen uh, to you. We're very delighted that you're here. Yeah. Thank Likewise. you. Likewise. Thank, Thank you. you. 